Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Mind. I'm Jeff Cornwall. Today our guest is Trevor Emerson. We'll be back to talk with him about his business after these words from our sponsor. Bandwidth for today's show is brought to you by SoftLayer.com. We love SoftLayer here at Talkopolis. They are the greatest hosting company ever. They make everything easy. Check out their website at SoftLayer.com. Thanks again for sponsoring the show. Welcome back to the Entrepreneurial Mind. Trevor Emerson, you have a business called Local Search Masters, correct? That's correct. And tell me what you guys do. We're a digital marketing company um, focusing on four key areas. So we specialize in search engine marketing, okay. uh, all forms of Google, Bing, marketing, etc. Uh, so if I'm a small media. business owner, you can help me pull my, mm -hmm. my search up the ranks. Get your website either up the ranks organically on the local side or also on the paid side. And keep me um, out of Google jail. That's right. Keep yeah. you out of Google jail, make me safe. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of, our industry's a little tough on that regard. Yes. Uh, because yeah. Because I've learned that the hard way. Mm -hmm, there's yeah. definitely some, uh, some shady dealings going right. on in that, in that space. So uh, our model is all based on recurring revenue. So it's extremely important to me uh, that our uh, product is something that's safe for our customers because if we're, you know, not that way, sure, then eventually they'll quit, and that uh, kind of busts up that cash and, flow. And you had customers who unintentionally had got have gotten in trouble with Google. I mean, just something that they didn't, they didn't even realize that Google uh, is concerned about because of some of those less than ethical companies in your industry. Definitely, and that's a pretty common um, new customer for us. Is someone who comes to us saying. I used to be found very well. I used to get a lot of leads online, and now I don't get any. And we investigate a little bit, and we say, well, that's because you're essentially nowhere to be found, not even for your own brand name, right. uh, because they've been penalized. And uh, Google, uh, Google being, they, they come up with different changes frequently. Right. Uh, and some of these changes are pretty significant. And so if you're not really on top of those and, and make sure that you're playing by those rules accordingly, then yeah, you can absolutely, e even unknowingly and not necessarily intentionally, you can go right, right out of there. Right to Google jail. Right to Google jail, straight right. to the sandbox. Second, what's the second thing you guys do? Uh, social media marketing. Okay. Uh, we do quite a bit of social media uh, for our clients um, and that involves a lot of the traditional stuff and it kind of dovetails into the other two main things that we do which is content generation and reputation management. So uh, social media sort of you know, it's a, it's a, it's a big component of those other two, and sort of they fit together well. Now you say traditional, but um, it, it, as as someone kind of watching from the sidelines, it feels like a moving target. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Facebook is changing in terms of their demographic, and Twitter is changing, and you've got LinkedIn emerging, and then you've got Google Plus trying to come in there. Mm -hmm. How's a company? Do you keep up with that, and 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 how do you keep your staff kind of ready for that next? six-month tradition that's going to be in place. That's certainly the uh, the key, is keeping uh, keeping the staff uh, uh, in tune with it and what's going on. And uh, essentially, I think the, the main way that we've been able to do that and I've been able to do that is to hire folks that are genuinely interested in it. You know, so they're, they're consistently on the uh, places online and, and right. in touch with the folks that are in the know in the industry to kind of keep up with the trends and do some strategy to see what's going on in the future. It's it's um, we've had to kind of foster an environment with our folks to say this is not a place for robots. This is a place for people to be creative thinkers, to be strategic, right. uh, and to be looking down the road. Because digital marketing, in my opinion, is just a big problem-solving activity. You know, how are you going to get someone to rank on Google? Well, you have to. F it's somehow figure out this big complicated math problem, right? And, and play by that rule. And, and one of the things you do is help with them with the bad stuff that gets out there as well. Absolutely. So how do you help defend people's reputation? Uh, again, it kind of focuses in on where they have... Lord knows I need help with my reputation, <laughs> so we'll have to talk after the show. I'm, I'm all for that. Um, if I can maintain a clean one online, I'm sure I can I can take care of all you. All right, good. So, uh, no, it's, it's, it's knowing the places where people can 
uh, speak about you, and especially the ones that are more prominent. Um, if someone is on a on Yelp or Google Local or uh, you know being local, I mean, there's there's a variety of places. Obviously, on any of your businesses' social feeds, where someone can go on and say, "This was my experience. This is what I think about you." All of those avenues and all those places need to be monitored. And it could be a competitor just trying to put a bad word in. Absolutely. Yeah. And so monitoring those closely using, you know, setting up like something simple like Google Alerts that tells you when someone's mentioned your brand name online in a variety of different places or, uh, you know, keeping up in that way uh, can be easy and free and helpful. Um, but really, uh, I think where the value of, of our service comes in is just having the infrastructure to monitor all of those different channels and make sure that if you're a doctor and someone's on WebMD or they're on Vitals.com and they're, you know, making some complaints or it really, even if they're saying something good, you want to know both and right. you want to respond to both. All right. Shift gears a little bit here. How does a guy who majors in political science mm -hmm. at Belmont end up in this industry running this kind of a company? <laughs> yeah. Uh, a friend of mine who was uh, working in the Nashville technology scene for a long time uh, and was working for a, a company that did websites for car dealerships. Uh, he and I were hanging out, having a good time one day, and we got to talking, and he was going through the MBA program at Vanderbilt, and one of the things you do there is come up with ideas. Sure. And uh, he had been encouraged by his current company to start investigating how to market these websites that they have for all these dealerships. and so search engine marketing was the big part of that mm -hmm. and he and I were talking and he was coming up with this kind of idea and he was brainstorming with me about it and I was a school teacher at the time I was teaching school and I you know I had just uh, uh, come back from being in Europe for a little while and things like that and uh, it just I, I don't know kind of just sounded like a interesting change so, and a good so idea. So you're not a techie guy? Absolutely not. He was the, he was definitely on the tech side of things and more on that side. And, and you were a school teacher. <laughs> I was a school teacher. That's right. right. So, so my skills were all business. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> quite the opposite. How did how did you how did you catch up and, and get to the point where obviously you built a, a very nice successful business? Yeah, it's. Um, I think that the skill set. That, obviously, you went to a great university. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah. it's very proud to be a Bruin. Yeah. And, um, there you go. And. Uh, uh, I think that the skills that were developed there uh, at, at Belmont with that major, which kind of leads itself traditionally into like a law school or something like that, uh, that general skill set of just being able to communicate well, to analyze a large grouping of information and then, you know, speak about it coherently uh, to someone, uh, those things lend itself really well to me being able to go out and get new customers and be able to speak to someone, make them feel comfortable. and explain a fairly complicated thing like I'm going to magically put your website on Google uh, you know and explain that in a way that was very um, easy to understand and easily digestible so I think that was th that was the skills I possessed and he you know he had some of the other skills and more of the business world skills and things like that so that sort of combo is what you know what kind of drove us. So are you still selling today in your role or do you have people doing that? Uh, I, you know I do a little bit here and there with some of the larger clients. Um, whenever we have some clients maybe we need to travel uh, to go close uh, then I may be involved but I have a have a, a VP of sales and he's phenomenal and, and, and the only time I really need to get involved is when he asks me to on some so of you're, larger So you're deals. well outside the national market with this business yeah. at this point. Yeah we have. How several. far do you reach at this point? Uh, I guess our furthest away clients in Denver, but I mean we wow. have we have clients um, kind of all over all over the US. Why would somebody from Denver go with a Nashville business instead of something local? Uh, again, I think a lot of that, there's no secret sauce to what we do. Uh, it's really, if, if you know how to do it, know how to play by the rules, it's essentially the same. So I think it's just being able to go and, and communicate that trust level uh, to the client as opposed to our competitors, because especially in this space, that's a big deal. Because you're you are dealing with um, some folks who may be less reputable than others, so sure. making sure to to uh, I'd say probably our biggest strength is is just that is being able to go and and communicate effectively that we're not here to uh, do anything but be genuine and uh, put our product out there in the best way possible and help you make money. Well, I'm going to have to bring a political science major from Belmont to come back and talk to my students. I, I think would, you got a great story. I would love that. All right, very nice to meet you. Pleasure. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.